Hey, what's going on? Eric Cortina, Texas Barnominiums. So today we're gonna show you how to form a foundation. We are gonna do a, let me look at the plants right quick. This is a 25-3 by 34 foot three. So we're gonna show you how to do that. We're gonna be using very basic tools. We're gonna be using a just a basic pouch, a twisted mason line, very essential. You need one of these. We have two, just in case. Uh, sledgehammers, I'm gonna be using a 16 pounder, and Darren's gonna be using a 12 pounder for obvious reasons. What reasons are those? Well, you're not very experienced, Darren. Oh, got that's, it. That's why. Got it. <laughs> and uh, plus, you don't know how to use a sledgehammer. Oh. That, that's the other reason. I'm here to learn. There you go. And uh, we're gonna be using duplex nails. These are uh, very common for you concrete. Know this all the way in? Just Darren just asked me if we drive both heads in. No, Darren, just one. Oh. The reason for that is uh, this head will act like a conventional nail, secure the forms, and then the other head is so that you can pull the nail out whenever we have to strip the forms. So, anyway, that's pretty much what we're going to be using. Obviously, you need a framing hammer. I have my uh, east wing, and of course, we need forms. The forms are right here, and we need stakes there in there. Everything else we have, obviously we have the laser level and we're gonna stay 10 feet away from that fence, okay? Also, you see the opening between these trees, this one and that one, we're gonna center the foundation right there in the middle and it's gonna go this way. So, we're gonna show you how to do all that. Obviously, the first thing, set up your level so we can shoot grades and uh, we have our trailer right here, it's full of forms. Anyway, let me shoot grades right quick and then I'll be back. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot grades in the corners to figure out how high our forms need to be. All right, so we have nine inches of difference. We're gonna go to the highest point. We're gonna go eight inches off the ground. That's gonna put the other side at 17 inches off the ground. We don't want to get too high up because we have a ramp out here in the front and uh, if we get too high up, then the ramp's not gonna serve its purpose. Eight inches gives us plenty of uh, plenty of uh, clearance off the ground. Plus, we're starting on the high side anyway, so there's no chance for water to go in. And again, that's the lowest point. So we need to stay 10 feet off of that fence and that side of the slab is 25 feet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull off 10 feet from the fence and we're gonna go wild what, what that means is we're gonna go about 30 feet we don't want to worry about exactly where the corner is at this point we just want to establish our, our uh, parallel line to the fence 10 feet away all right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure off the ground eight inches i'm gonna drive a nail then i'm gonna set my level on that and that's gonna set the level for everything else Metal pins would work best here, but we don't have any. We may have to go get some. I didn't realize this ground was gonna be like this. Most of the ground that we work at is either clay or sand. Today, it's not. check your string line put your level on the string line after you have the string line up to ensure that when you drove the nail you didn't get it wrong or that it didn't move on you ultimately the string line is what matters so 
double check the string line. Now we're gonna measure from tree to tree to find out exactly how wide it is. Then we're gonna take the center, we're gonna mark the center on the string, and then we're gonna go half the distance this way, half the distance that way. That's gonna get this slab perfectly centered between the trees. corners established those are 10 feet away from the fence the corners we're perfectly centered between the trees that does not move we have another line which is 34 feet 3 inches parallel to that line now we're going to square it up for that we're going to use uh, the uh, Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared so go ahead and do the math for me right quick while I get set up we're going to go to a short commercial break and we'll be right back all right, so we're back. Did you come up with 42 feet, six inches and five eighths? If you did, good job. If not, <laughs> go back and figure out what you did wrong. Uh, again, the uh, one leg of the triangle is A, which is uh, 25 feet, three inches. So that's 25.25 feet. The second leg is uh, 34 feet, three inches. So that's 34 feet, 0.25. And then you do your a square plus b square equals c square, and uh, you're seeing me on the phone how I did all the math. I just do it on my iPhone. I don't I don't use a fancy calculator because if you learn how to do that, then you may forget it or it may be out of battery. So I do it on my phone all the time. That way, I can pretty much use any calculator to get my uh, hypotenuse, which is in this case 42 feet six and five eighths inches. All right. Uh, as I said before, we already have our corners established. So what we're going to do is we're going to go from that corner and we're going to put our diagonal. And we're going to mark that line over there. And then from there we're going to pull 25 feet 3 inches this way. And then we're going to shoot our other diagonal. And it, if it doesn't hit exactly on the other mark that we have, then something is wrong. This is how you get it right and you also double check yourself at the exact same time. 34 feet 3 inches from each other on both sides. I'm gonna use my 35 foot tape for that because we're only going 34 foot three. All right, so now that we know that we're perfectly parallel to each other, now we're gonna shoot our diagonals. So now what we're going to do, we're going to put another stake right here, another one on the other side, and then we're just going to get the string line to line up exactly with those dots, and we're good to go. The other option that we have is we can actually run the forms here and there, and then pull off the forms. Do it however you need to, just make sure you maintain those, those uh, dots, never touch the strings. the side done we have the uh, forms up and the stakes in now I'm gonna go ahead and brace all this Darren went to go get some pins because as you can tell those stakes are not going in very easily so he went to go get some pins and also some two by sixes so we can do this side instead of using panels because all the panel forms that we have are too tall really for this job actually they're fine for that side but this side they're gonna be too tall so he went to go get some two by sixes and some pins I'm gonna do this in the meantime now I'm gonna start forming this side over here so first thing we do we put a nail over there on the forms I know a lot of people use batter boards for this but because we use panel forms batter boards get in the way so right there the marks right there and go down about a quarter inch 
Drive the nail in, then I'm gonna bend it. Like that. I'm gonna hook the string line to that. All right, so you pull the string in line with a mark on the string line, right here, lined up. And I'm gonna drive a stake right here. Hard ground. Pull the string line, line it up about right there, right here. Okay, it's not perfectly on the line, so I'll move it that way a little. right there perfectly on the line also it's barely touching the other line okay so we before we go any further we're gonna make sure that this form is perfectly straight. We have all the braces already on the stakes. We just have to nail them in place. So what I'm gonna do, we know the corners are where they're supposed to be. I'm gonna come in here. Put a nail on here. Put a string line right there. That string line, we're gonna make it inch and a half away from the form. Actually, I'm gonna go one inch right there and do the same thing on the other side. Remember, you don't want the line touching the forms. Well, we are super gassed. It is too hot. Uh, we don't have that much left, but my goodness, right now we, we drive a stake or two and it's like energy is completely gone. So, I mean, that ground is just so hard. It's, it just takes a lot of effort. We try to get going and our energy level is just so low right now. This heat is just horrendous. And that ground is so hard. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go get a hotel close by and uh, get some rest and either I'll come back later today or tomorrow morning and finish it. All right, so I'm feeling a little bit better now. I got me some uh, electrolyte, got me some Gatorade Zero. <laughs> I got me a lot of, uh, a lot of drinks to uh, try to rehydrate. My goodness, that was rough. You guys gotta be careful out there. It is a hundred and it is 5 p.m. right now and it feels like 103 still. We're out there <clears throat> about 2 p.m. Well, we're there all day, but it got really bad around 2 p.m. Darren had a little uh, battery powered uh, DeWalt saw and it kind of gave out on us. So that kind of put the final nail in the coffin and, and I'm glad it did because, uh, uh, man, we were just not getting anything done. But anyway, I'm here at Home Depot I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna try to get me uh, try to get me a good uh, a good saw, uh, maybe a warm drive. But I want cordless. I'm I'm trying to go cordless all the way. So anyway, but like I said, I, I feel much better. I drank like two of these big drinks already, and I'm starting to feel a lot better. <laughs> so 
All right, let me go in there and buy a saw and I'll see you shortly.